Okay, so as we've been talking about finding that theme scripture for the year, and I'm not going to ask who has or who hasn't, but, you know, I'm here to help you, not to uh, single you out and not to put you down. My job as a pastor is to help you. And so I know some of you need help, right? If you haven't found a theme scripture, I told you, you can use mine. It's, I don't have the copyright to it. You can use it. 3 John 1, 2, right? It's available to you as well. If you like it, use it, right? You can use it. But I wanted to go a step further because if you didn't know what to use, I'm going to share some scriptures with you. I'm going to share four different scriptures with you that can change your life. Four, right? Four different scriptures. They're life-changing prayers. I've shared with you before in the past about the prayers of Paul. There's many prayers of Paul. But I'm just going to share four of them with you that are life-changing. But see, the thing is this. You have to pray them. You have to confess them. You have to do this on a regular basis if you want some life change. Amen? Let's start with the first one. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. You hear me say this often, and if you haven't, you know, well, then, then good. This is new to you. But the bottom line is this. I pray this over people all the time. All the time I pray this over people. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse uh, 17. Right? This is some good word right here. Right? And, and you can personalize these, these, you know, scriptures when you turn them into prayers for yourself. Because that's what Paul did. Look at in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. If you're praying this for yourself, or you can pray for somebody else, you just, you, you, you customize it. You could say, oh, you know, Lord... I pray that you give, you know, uh, so-and-so the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. You know, you personalize it. Verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Pray this. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power wisdom revelation knowledge verse 17 tells us right and then verse 18 tells us about spiritual comprehension verse 19 tells us about power there's power for those who believe amen because look at verse 20 look at what his verse 20 says because which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. How much power is there? Enough power to raise Jesus from the dead. That's the power we're talking about. Amen? The Word of God is powerful. Get a hold of it. Learn to start using it. That's what it's for. It will change your life. Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to go to verse 16. This is the second prayer of Paul. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. And the word says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. I know there's people this morning that need to be strengthened, right? Because I hear it all the time. Can I pray for you? Pray for God to give me strength. I hear it all the time. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth of and height to know the love of Christ which passes 
knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. See, we need to be strengthened in our inner man. The inner man is inside. Your spirit, you, your heart, you need to be strengthened there. Because what happens is this, is that life beats us up and it breaks our spirit. How can life break your spirit? It's because you're not built up, right? When your spirit is not strong, it's going to, you know, it's, it's not going to be able to wither the storm or weather the storm rather, right? And we've talked about this. Whatever you feed the most is going to be the strongest. You've got to feed your spirit, man. Word of God. The Word of God feeds your spirit, man. It'll strengthen you. Amen? And see, when it strengthens you, you know, you handle things different. You go about things differently. Right? And how about here in verse 20? Right? Or excuse me, verse 19. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. See, people in the world can't even comprehend the love of God the way a believer can. Right? It surpasses knowledge. The mind can't even fathom how awesome the love of God is. It's, it's beyond comprehension, the love of God. And, and I love how in the previous verse when it talks about, you know, it tells us, not in the previous verse, but uh, let's see here. In verse 18, what's the width? the length, the depth, and the height, right? It's unfathomable, the love of God. It surpasses all understanding, right? It's awesome, right? Pray that. Stand on it. But see, you can also pray it for other people. You know, you can go before God and, and, and tell him, you know, Lord, you know, I pray that, you know, my, my, you know, my relative, my friend, my neighbor may know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and that they may be filled with all the fullness of God. Pray that. See, you turn these into prayers. Just Paul prayed them and got much results. Pray them and you can get results. People have written books on the prayers of Paul. There's many of them out there. That's how powerful the prayers of Paul are. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1. And as I was telling you earlier, there are so many prayers of Paul. Read the New Testament, all the epistles. You'll find the prayers of Paul. But we're focusing on these four because these are life-changing. Philippians chapter 1, we're going to verse number 9. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. It's just right after Ephesians, the next book right, right uh, after. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of of God. See, when it talks about knowledge and discernment, you know, that's information about God's truth. See, and, and then being able to apply it. Amen? Being able to apply this information. Right? And so, why do you want to apply this knowledge and discernment, this information about God's truth? Why do you need to be able to apply it? Because, see, if you don't know how to apply the Word of God in your life, what's going to happen? You're going to live your life led by your emotions. Oh, I'm not feeling good today, right? Or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sad because of this situation, or this person hurt my feelings, right? Or someone so said that I was ugly or that I was fat. And you believe them. That's the sad thing. Believing what people say about you. Right? You need to believe what God says about you. Amen? 
See, because when you don't know how to apply the Word of God in your life, you're going to be led by your emotions, and your emotions are what? They're temporary. Your emotions are temporary. And not only that, your emotions are going to lead you the wrong way. See, we were not created to be led by our emotions. God gave us emotions to be able to use, right, on this earth, but not to, for them to, to lead us. We're supposed to be able to, to control them. Amen? You're supposed to be spirit-led. Amen? Spirit-led. Led by this. And where does this get the information from? Right here, from the Word of God. That's how you feed your spirit, man. And when the fear, spirit man is fed, right, the spirit man is there guiding you and directing you, right? Letting you know that when a situation happens and you're all frazzled, right, to say, okay, because we're human, sure. You, we all have emotional outburst. You're human. But when you're spirit-led, you're able to, okay, take a couple of deep breaths here. Okay, all right, Lord, what do I need to do here? You start to pray, and Holy Spirit, help me. And before you know it, you're not thinking about, you know, acting all crazy, right? You're listening to the Lord talk to you about how you should handle the situation in a cool, calm, collective way. Because, see, when you start to act out in your emotions, what happens? I see it all the time when I'm watching cops on TV, right? How many times do the police officers go to somebody's house because they're fighting, over what? Emotional things, right? Fighting about things that happened years ago. But once they start putting a couple of beers down or drinks, whatever it is, the emotions get stirred up, right? And the bottom line is this. It's all downhill after that because there's no winners. And that's why we need to be spirit-led, because when these things happen in our life, and they will happen, right? When you get the bad news or when you get the bad report, you're prepared. You're ready to say, okay, Lord, we're going to do this. We're going to get through this. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, the doctor gave me six weeks to live. Man, you're going to be a better place than us, right? Because the word tells us to die is gain. Think about it. To go to a place where there's no more tears, no more sorrow, being in the, you know, bosom of Abraham, to be in the presence of God where it's the way God intended it to be, you know, that's a better place. But so many people are afraid to go to that place because they're in fear of leaving this place. And even this place... As much evil and hardship and heartache and problems and everything that goes with it, this earth that, that's filled in this earth, or, people are afraid to leave it because this is all they know. You see, what happens is when you get in the Word and you have a strong relationship with the Lord and you start to trust Him, He'll show you things in the spiritual He'll start to show you that there's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to death because as a Christian, you're not supposed to fear death. As a Christian, you know that we are here temporarily. The Bible says we're aliens on this earth. Truly, aliens. We're just visiting. This is not our home, but it's all we know. And that's why we have to start to understand that there's a place that's been prepared for us. And this ain't it, even though this is all we know. And don't, you know, you know, don't get caught up on being afraid to leave this earth. Oh, but you don't understand, Pastor. I can't leave my dog Fido. Nobody knows how to handle him but me. If I go, who's going to take care of Fido? They're probably going to give him to the pound because they don't like him. 
because they're jealous. He's my baby. Fido will be okay without you. He'll be okay. Do not be afraid of death. Understand there's a better place for the Christian. Amen? God is good. And so going back to Philippians 1, 9 through 11, knowing how to apply the word of God, getting that knowledge and having discernment, knowing, right? Discernment, knowing. Because you don't want to be led by your emotions. Amen? And then I like how it goes on, and I believe in verse number 11. What does it say right here in verse 11? Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, right, are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. See, the fruits of righteousness is the result of Jesus at work in your life. Fruit. Fruit is just a terminology, an example of the of the result, right? You compare it to when you look at an orange tree, an apple tree, whatever, something that's living and growing. It starts with what? A seed. And over time, it gets watered and it grows, right? And what's the end result? That nice, ripe orange or whatever it is. That's the, the end result. Well, your life is the same way. See, when you got the Word of God in your life, pouring into your life, right? It's like seeds. And as you continue to put more of the Word of God in your life, you're watering those seeds, just like that plant gets watered. And then as those seeds start to grow, what's the end result in your life? Just like the orange tree, the apple tree, whatever, there's going to be fruit, He calls it here, fruits of righteousness. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, it's called fruit of the Spirit. These are things that should be able to be seen in your life. The the result, if there's no fruit in your life, you've got to put word in. Water those seeds that are there so that the fruit can be there. Amen? Because the fruit will come. The fruit will come. God is good. Let's go to the last prayer of Paul, and this is in the book of Colossians. Just keep turning to your right. Next book here next door, Colossians chapter 1. We're going to go to verse number 9. Colossians 1, verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The knowledge of His will for your life. See, that's when things change. When it's no longer doing what you think you should do, but when you fully surrender to the Lord Jesus and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your plan for my life? See, I I have a plan, and I've spent many years on this plan. I've even gone to school for this plan. I'm even working now in a job that prepared me, the school prepared me for this plan. But when you finally say, Lord, what is it you want me to do? He may do a 360 and say, "Uh, you're in the wrong place. Or he may say, you're right where you need to be. But this is what you need to do. The bottom line is this, is that you want to be fulfilling his will for your life. See, when you start to surrender to the Lord, everything, the will, I'm telling you, you're on a whole different level. You're, you're on a whole different level when you're doing it His way and not your way. Amen? Verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, this is powerful right here. It's just to pray verse 10 over yourselves, saying, Lord, I pray that I may walk worthy of you, fully pleasing you, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of you. You see how that can be a prayer? 
Or you could turn it around and put Johnny's name in there and say, Lord, I, I pray that Johnny walks worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing you, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of you. Pray that over people and yourself. The prayers are powerful. Amen? See, that's why I'm sharing these prayers of Paul with you, because they're so powerful. Verse number 11. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. I know some of you may have a problem with this. Because let me explain what 11 says. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. In other words, to have. Patience when you're going through trials. To be able to be calm when things ain't so good. Right? That's what 11 is saying. Because if you are strengthened with all might according to His power, not your power, His power, get it? His power, not your power, strengthened in His might, not your might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. Amen? It makes it possible to endure when you're going through these, these things. Having patience when you're going through trials. Because it's His power that enables you to endure the trials patiently. Patiently. Verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. You've been qualified to be a partaker in the inheritance of the saints in the light. What does that mean? That means... That what everything the Father gave Jesus, He's given to you. The Word tells us that you're a joint heir with Christ. Everything that He's given Him, He's given you. That's why Jesus said, All the, everything that, I, that I've done, you're going to do also and greater because I go to the Father. All the works that Jesus did, He said, we can do them and even greater. Because it's the same Holy Spirit that's available to us that was available to Him. Amen? See, you need to understand what your inheritance is. What is your inheritance? God gave it all to you. Now you just got to learn how to claim it and go get it. See, because the enemy is a thief. And if you allow him... To keep you stumbling, you're never going to be able to claim your inheritance. Amen? Pray the pr prayers of Paul. They're powerful. A lot of times people pray, ah, I don't know what to pray. Pray the Word of God. Pray the Word of God. It works. I'm telling you. I've given you four different prayers of Paul that are life-changing. Turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm a doer of the word. See, even if, you don't, even if you don't believe that you're a doer of the word, at least say it in faith. Amen? Start releasing your faith. Releasing your faith. See, that's why it's so important to be able to speak the word of God. Right? I showed you, and I think it was, it was last week, I think I showed you about the word of faith. Amen? I showed you about the word of faith. It's important to speak the word. Right? Let's, let's wrap up here. I shared this with you last week, but we're going to go back to Jeremiah chapter 1. So if you missed it last week, good. If you were thinking about lunch and you missed it, you get a second chance here. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. 
Don't take my word for it, what I've been saying. Look at what the Lord says. Verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. I am ready to perform my word. So, I hope you guys see that. God is ready to perform His Word. Stand on the Word. Amen? Confess the Word. Here are the four different prayers of Paul. They're life-changing, but they're only life-changing if you stand on them. Right? So, I can't, I can't uh, uh, confess them for you. You have to do that yourself. But it's all laid out there for you. I've given you the answers to the test. Right? Think about it. Remember you're in school, right? And you want the answers to the test? What if somebody gave you the answers to the test, but you didn't write them on your answer sheet? Are you going to pass the test? No. You got you, you to gotta, you gotta at least write the answers down, right? I've given you the answers to the test right here about confessing the word. But you've got to do your part. Amen? Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. If everyone could stand as we get ready to close, God is good. Amen? God is doing great things. And you know what's interesting is that I didn't share everything with you about my finances because, see, I don't want this to be about me and you say, oh, you know, it's not about me. It's about God. He gets all the glory. Amen? And see, it's not about me getting on my soapbox, but what I was trying to do is encourage you to show you that it does work to trust God. And I fully trusted Him with my finances. Amen? And I could tell you more stories, but it's not about trying to make myself look good. I'm trying to show you how the Word works and how good God is. Amen? God will do the same for you. He's no respecter of persons. You just have to trust Him. Amen? And so the bottom line is this. It's all been set out for you. I've given you the answers to the test. You just have to do your part and apply it. Things will change, and I guarantee you. I guarantee you, you start confessing the Word of God over your life, things will change. It has to. He's ready to perform it. If everyone can just bow their heads and close their eyes as we close. Heavenly Father,